In today's episode of Revive and Thrivology, I share with you my three pillars to an excellent office space. This is for you whether you have a small cubicle office, you have the big corner office with windows, or maybe you have a home office. I know you're going to love it. Keep listening. Welcome to Revive and Thrivology. I help women transform their lives by harmonizing their living space through holistic home practices. I'm your host, Lisa Morton. Welcome to Revive and Thrivology. I'm your host, Lisa Morton. And in this solo episode, I'm going to share with you my three pillars to a great office space. I've worked with so many clients doing home offices, doing commercial office spaces. And recently, I've had an uptick in home offices. So I thought this was a perfect timing. It's time to do this episode. I know you're going to love this stuff. Here we go. We're going to dive in. So I have three pillars to a great office space okay number one is ergonomics so you may know what about this a little bit about this you may be totally foreign to this term um, but we're going to dive into it and i'm going to give you some tips to correctly set up your office because you will feel different if you follow these my second pillar is setting up routines this is something i work with all my clients to do I know this will be beneficial for you. And then my third one is, of course, feng shui. I'm going to give you my three favorite things to implement into your home office to inspire positive energy. Okay, so let's dive in. My three pillars to a great office space. Okay, we talked about ergonomics. So um, let's see. I looked up the actual definition in the library and applied science concerned with designing and arranging things people use so that the people and things interact most efficiently and safely. It's also called biotechnology, human engineering, and human factors. So, you know, you can think about if you have a job where you're constantly moving your arm in one direction, of course, your arm is going to get worn out. You know, I know a lot of people are even noticing they're they're down looking at their tablets or their phones all the time, and they're feeling it in their neck. You're you're able to see it. You know, people, what do they call it? Tech neck (laughs) around their neck and the lines from, you know, repeated motion of your body. You know, it's not just visual, you know, aesthetic, you know, like your neck, but You can literally injure your body over time doing the same thing over and over and over. And here's one thing I've learned is that when having home office, a lot of people don't want to take the time to invest in this or the money to invest in it. But it's so important. You're spending a lot of time in your home office. So set it up for success. Okay, so let's dive in a little bit. So let's start at your feet. So if you're sitting at your desk now, you may want to just take a little moment and, you know, put your pen down, put your coffee down, just take a little inventory, right? So let's start at our feet. We want our feet on the ground. Okay, if your feet don't touch the ground, maybe your feet are on um, the chair legs or something, put your feet flat on the ground. This will not only make you feel better, but will help you feel grounded too, right? If your feet don't meet, meet the ground, like you can't get your chair low enough, then get a step you can buy platforms to put your feet on to rest your feet on you know especially if you're a petite woman you can rest your feet on that that will help your body feel better and your legs won't go to sleep moving on up you want to sit on your chair so your back is against the back of the chair and then the seat should stop about an inch to two inches behind your knee so you don't want the back of the chair digging into the back of your calf or the back of your knee there. So make sure there's a little gap, okay? Moving on up your back, we always want lumbar support. And most office chairs these days have pretty good lumbar support. I've even seen some that it's adjustable. You can turn the dial and increase the lumbar support. I have an old vintage office chair that it's super cool and I love it. There is no lumbar support. So <laughs> I have a lumbar pillow that I just place back there. And it's it's just it's a cute it matches my office and it looks cute in the chair when I get up to leave at the end of the day. But you can always add a pillow for your low back. You need that support. Okay. Moving on up Check in with your arms. Are your armrests at the proper height? So your arms are not, your shoulders are not coming up. Um, if you don't have armrests, that's okay. If you don't use your armrests, make sure you put them all the way down so that they can, your chair can easily slide under your desk. 
So your seat height, you want to make sure your, you want to work toward, so your elbows and your knees bend at a 90 degree angle. Okay, roughly that, you know, a 90 degree angle. Let's keep going on up to the computer screen. So 20 inches is our number, but give or take, right? So I always kind of take my hand and reach out. And that's about the distance you want your computer screen from your face. Height is really important here. It's important to have it. You want to have the center of the screen ever so slightly lower than eye level. And you'll notice that as you set it up like this, then the camera at the top, if you're doing a lot of Zoom meetings or conference meetings online, the camera will just be in that perfect, beautiful, spot on position. So that's your computer monitor. Um, I want to take a moment to tell you I'm totally guilty of something here. <laughs> I'm totally guilty of not setting up my space correctly. If you use a laptop, this is for you. I moved office spaces and did not take the time to set up my desk properly. I mean, I'm totally guilty here. I was working on my laptop for entirely too long. And sometimes, you know, you'll take your laptop and sit at a coffee shop and work. And, and uh, you know, I love doing that. And it's nice, you know, but your, your computer isn't set up to for your body in the correct position. You know, that's a temporary thing. However, I wasn't fixing it when I went home. I would still have my laptop set on my desk, on the bar, on the desktop. I started developing TMJ problems. It was due to some stress and things I was going through, but I know this, this motion of looking down towards my screen was causing my jaw to clench. So if you're having some TMJ problems, take a look into your computer screen, the height, okay? We don't want it all the way down. I found a really great laptop stand that I'll put a link into the show notes to the one that I found. I love it. It's It folds up so I can take it when I'm traveling. Um, I can take it with me that, you know, just keep in mind that if you do buy the stand for your laptop for the, you know, to elevate the screen, you will then need a separate keyboard, but that's easy. Just you know, plug in an extra keyboard and it makes it easy, but your body will thank you 150%. <laughs> so we went through setting up your body. Uh, two little bonuses, two, three little bonuses here. Number one is take a break. When you're working for long periods of time, take a break. Every 30 minutes, try to look away. So we're so close to looking at things up close, our tablets, our computers, our phones, Take a break and look off into the distance, maybe out a window if you can. Look off into the distance to let your eyes reset to the different view, okay? That's bonus number one. Bonus number two is if you've ever thought about investing in a standing desk, then this is your sign. Go snag one because they're amazing. I've worked with so many clients and we've installed these or purchased them and, and they're just, they love them, okay? You can get a few different types. So you can get the kind that it's a full desk and you hit a button and it just magically raises and lowers and it's a beautiful thing. If you love the style of your desk, you really love your desk, the look of it, you can buy a piece, separate piece that goes on top of your desk and then that lifts and lowers so you can stand as you'd like. So there are options. My third little bonus is the desk treadmills are really popular and I've had a lot of people ask me about them. So these are not the type of treadmill that you would maybe want to go jogging on, go running on, but it's great to stand there, you know, take part in a conference call, you know, be mindful that there's noise from the treadmill because it is a treadmill. So there's going to be that motor noise, the rotation of the, of the track going around. Um, but you can, you can do some work as you're walking. Just get a little movement going. So check out the standing desk. Check out the treadmills, uh, desk treadmills, because they're super fun right now. All right, let's go into my third pillar to a great office. My third pillar is to set up routines. This, this is, no, I'm sorry, this is my second pillar. This might be my most important. The one I've found over the years to be most valuable I've worked from home going on 12 years. My husband did a stint where he was working from home and 
you know, I know from my experience and my experience having him around that it's hard. You know, he used to, it would be 10 a.m. and he would come knock on my door and ask me, you know, what's for lunch? (laughs) And it was hilarious. It was definitely an adjustment uh, for him. But if you're new to working from home, have some compassion and know that it's going to be a little process. But here's what I recommend. And this applies to a home office, but also if you go to an office too. I want you to set up a routine. And you might listen to this and be like, oh, that's easy. I can, yeah, that's something normal. Why, you know, why is this a big deal? But it is because people don't take the time to do it. So (laughs) I want you to set up a routine. And I have a handout that I'll put a link in the show notes to grab this handout, okay? You are going to set up steps as you enter your office and then reverse those steps as you leave your office. And it just is kind of silly things. So here's mine. I open the door. I turn on the lamp. I then open the blinds. I turn on my music. And then I pull up my chair, adjust my pillow, and I have a little throw on the back of it, uh, on the back of my chair. And then I sit down to work. You, and then, then at the end, when I'm done at the end of the day, I do that in the exact opposite order. You know, I, I adjust my pillow, whatever, my blanket. I push my chair and I turn my music off. I close my blinds. I turn my lights off and then I close the door behind me. This is really powerful as over time when you're doing this, this will trigger your body. So the second you walk into your office, it'll be like, oh, I'm going into work mode. You know, your brain will go into that mode. Your body will go into that mode. It's also really beneficial at the end of the day when it's time to turn off. I know what it's like working from home, trying to turn that off. You're sitting there eating dinner and thinking, oh my gosh, I have five more emails to get through. I need to run back up to the office and do those later tonight. And sometimes we do have to do that, right? Especially if you have your own business, you're an entrepreneur, you just have to sometimes work some odd hours. But, you know, it's really powerful to to help your body move in and out of work mode. So set up this routine. And again, I have this handout. It's simple. You're just going to write five, six different things down that you can do in an exact order. But I want you to repeat that exact order step by step every single time going in and step by step every time going out. I think you'll find it really interesting. Okay. All right. My third pillar is feng shui for your office. Three things that have been really helpful in the clients I've worked for over the years. Number one is lighting. If you are in a commercial office space, most often there's going to be some overhead lighting. Hopefully you have access to sunlight. If you don't have access to sunlight, try to get some sunlight during the day. Go stand near a window, go take a walk over lunch. Instead of sitting down, just eating your lunch, go outside, go have a picnic if it's nice out. Maybe invite your coworkers, get outside, get some fresh air, get some sunlight. I also recommend bringing some sort of lighting into your space, a lamp with a warm white glow. So you, there's going to be the overhead lights, and that's okay. You're just going to ignore that. You're going to add that nice glow to your desk, and you might be in a cubicle, and that's okay. I guarantee everyone is going to wander near your desk, your cubicle, your office space with this warm white light, and they're going to be like, man, it feels really good. It, it warms our bodies. It has a different sensation than the overhead lighting, and it just makes your shoulders drop a little bit. It makes you just feel a little more comfortable. So lighting, bring in a lamp to your desk. I love it. You will love it. Next is plants. Plants aren't, I mean, in recent years, plants have become so big, but they weren't always that way. I remember when I worked in an office and I had a cubicle and this was probably 15 years ago, 8, 12 years, I don't know, a while back. (laughs) And I remember I worked in this cubicle and one of the other designers there brought in a bamboo plant and put it in in her cubicle. And some people kind of made fun of her bringing a plant in. But the whole time I was like, wow, I love the idea that she brought a plant into the office. Can you do that? (laughs) But I found I was constantly walking past her cubicle to take a peek at that bamboo plant. 
And I will never forget Debbie's bamboo plant. <laughs> that definitely, uh, I didn't understand what it was doing to me at the time, but it was giving me that, that connection to nature that I was so needing because it was so inside in this enclosed building in a little office cubicle. So bring some plants in. People are going to love it. Your coworkers are going to love it. If you don't have access to a window, find maybe a windowsill that you can maybe borrow for the weekend and place the plant on the windowsill or maybe take it home if you must. There, there are many low light plants. I believe I have a blog post from a while back where I list some low light plants. So I'll get that and put that in the show notes as well. My third thing I wanted to mention is coloring. So you know I um, love to employ the five elements of feng shui. If you're really stressed, if you're anxious at work, bring in the colors of beige, tan, browns, those earth tones. So you don't have to necessarily wear. Here's something I like to do. I have this big, cozy, textural throw that I put over the back of my chair. It matches my lumbar pillow, yes. <laughs> I put this throw over the back of my chair and it just has a little texture. It's kind of nice to lean against and it has that earthy texture that I love. So when I'm having a really busy day, I can kind of lean back and feel that sensation and it's near my body. So I can help myself, you know, it helps stay grounded. Okay, if you're feeling a little stuck, like, you know, maybe you're in... You know, advertising or something and you're trying to get creative ideas bring in some blue blue for fluidity creativity you can bring in some items and you of course you'll have to look into your office any rules you know I know a lot of places you can't burn a candle or something but even a small decorative figurine a plant in maybe a small container of a certain color Use those five elements to bring color into your space because so many commercial spaces are white, gray, beige. <laughs> there isn't a lot going on there. So bring these five elements in. And again, this all applies to your, if you go to a commercial space for your office, your office is outside of your home, or if it's inside your home. Don't neglect your home office. Bring those colors in, decorate it, make it feel really wonderful and really inspiring. Here's a bonus for the feng shui thing. I didn't even plan on doing this, but I just thought of it. Don't forget to hang your diplomas, your awards, your certificates, things that you are proud of. I'm constantly going into people's offices and they're framed hidden behind the door. They're framed, but they're sliding back behind a, a, a file cabinet. Bring those out. Hang those up. They're important. They will remind you of your successes and push you towards more successes. All right, folks, those are my three tips to a great office space, my three pillars that I focus on when working with every client. If you want to learn more about working together on an office space, head over to the show notes. Again, all those bonuses will be in there and links to everything I talked about. If you have questions, reach out. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. I will see you next time. I'd like to thank our production company, Caraggio Media, the WELT 95.7 Studios, and our sponsor, Good G. For more information, follow the link in the show notes. Be sure to hit like, hit the subscribe button, and leave us a five-star review. If you want to connect, find us on Facebook, and be sure to let me know what topics you'd like to hear about. Thank you so much for listening. See you next time.